I wanted to really quickly cover some of the stuff in the EC2 dashboard here to help resolve some potential confusion with things that you might be seeing here. So I'm on the EC2 dashboard page. It has an overview of quite a lot of things. It might be a little bit different for everyone here, but there's a grouping, a listing of resources here. So a number of instances running, dedicated hosts, elastic IP addresses, all that good stuff. A bunch of extra information. Service health here, which is just basically if there's any issues going on in Amazon. And of course, we have all these options here on the left. So let's just do a really quick review on what these things are. So we'll start with events. Events can be a bunch of different things, but typically you'll see things pop up in here if your servers have issues that AWS knows about and might have scheduled things to happen. So for example, sometimes your virtual machines are in physical hosts that are due for maintenance or to be replaced by another physical host. And you'll see in that case, an event is here to be scheduled, usually something like seven days out or 30 days out, something like that, where your server will be shut down and it'll be up to you to start it back up. Now, this is pretty rare. And a lot of times, instead of in a nice event, you'll actually just see your server fail for some reason. And if you are listening for it, if you have a CloudWatch alarm set up for it, you'll get an alarm from AWS on that. There's a system check alarm, for example, that can get fired for that. Now, that doesn't happen a lot, but if you have a lot of servers, like for example, at work, I have something like 300 servers, we see that often enough. So the events tab is something to check once in a while to see if anything has popped up there automatically from AWS. Tags is a really interesting thing. It's new to me. I actually haven't seen this until just a few days ago. You can see tags that are used in your EC2 area in your account, and you can even bulk update tags on resources, which is really neat. Limits. Now, limits is specific to your account, and you can see some limits related to EC2. Limits are in place on every new account in AWS. To increase your limits, you have to make a customer support request. So you'll see limits on things like the number of S3 buckets you can make, number of SQS queues. In our case, we'll see the number of launch configurations and auto-scaling groups have limits. And we're actually limited to zero on certain types of dedicated hosts we can make. So we actually need to ask AWS to increase those limits if we want to use the dedicated host features for certain server types. Over here, we see instances. So we have the list of instances and their various states. Instance types, this is purely informational. You can look up information about different instance types available in AWS. There's launch templates. Now launch templates is very similar to creating an EC2 instance, but instead of actually creating an EC2 instance, you're creating a template to tell AWS how to create an EC2 instance. So you fill out all the details about the EC2 instance, including the base server to use, the type, all that information that are basically part of the API call to make an EC2 instance to begin with. You put that all here and you have a template and then you can just create an instance from that template more easily. Now, this is something that is often used with auto-scaling groups because you'll tell an auto-scaling group to create all its servers based off a specific template and it'll just go ahead and do that. Now there's launch template and there is launch configurations, which is under the auto scaling area here. Launch templates are newer and they are what you basically should be using. It's what AWS recommends you using. Launch configurations are older. It has less features and AWS has a warning in the documentation. If you look it up saying basically use launch templates instead of launch configuration. Spot requests are to make requests for spot instances. Savings plans and reserved instances are ways to save money on your uh, EC2 servers in return for guaranteeing to AWS that you're going to run a server for somewhere between one and three years. Dedicated hosts are hosts that you can allocate, and AWS will give you a dedicated host on which you can create EC2 instances. Capacity reservations is just like we described. You can say, I want a capacity reservation for, say, 10 servers of the T3 .nano type, for example and you start paying for those 10 servers immediately. And in return, AWS will guarantee that you always have those 10 available on your account. You'll never see the error that EC2 might return to you saying, sorry, this region and this availability zone doesn't have capacity to make that server type. Images, we can see the AMIs we've created in this account for the Packer course. These are the base server images that you create and customize and from which you can make new servers. Volumes. So every instance has a volume, at least one. So the one will be the root volume where all the system stuff is stored. This is the volume that I have in our Cloudcast web server. It's a GB3 type, 3000 IOPS, 125 megabytes per second. It's 16 gigabytes in size. You can see it's in availability zone US2B, where the same where the server is. So the volumes are actually specific to availability zones as well. It's in use and has an allocation ID. The allocation ID is saying this, the EBS drive is allocated to this EC2 instance. 
This is encrypted, so it has a KMS, a key management service uh, key ID. And in addition to volumes, we have snapshots. So a snapshot is a copy of a volume, a backup of a volume. They technically exist in Amazon S3. That's where they're stored, but that's transparent to you. You don't get to see those in any bucket in your account. So these are snapshots that are created as part of the AMI creation, because to make an AMI, you spin up a server, you make a snapshot of the volume after you customize that server. And then from that snapshot, you make an AMI. So that's why we see snapshots related to the AMI. So they have the same name. In other words, that's created by Packer, which spins up a server, creates a snapshot, and then creates an AMI from that snapshot. Lifecycle Manager, you can hook into the lifecycle of EBS disk and snapshots in this case, and you can create certain policies to do stuff based on actions in the EBS. Network and security. So some of this overlaps in the VPC section of AWS. Here we see security groups specific to the region I'm in. And if I had different VPCs in this region, it would list out those as well related to those VPCs. Elastic IPs. So every server, not every server, but many servers, if they're in a public subnet, will have an IP address assigned to them right here. Here we see the public IP address, but if you turn your server off and turn it back on, that IP address, the public one, to reach it on the public internet will change. To make it so it does not change, you set up an elastic IP address and allocate it to that server so that the IP address of the server never changes. You pay for that, of course, but luckily it's fairly cheap and that's basically the way to make sure you have an IP address that does not go away. Placement groups, as we discussed, you can create placement groups so that when you create an EC2 server, it'll choose some certain strategy on how to place those servers. Key pairs, as we discussed, is where you have your SSH keys to allow SSH access into servers that you spin up. Network interfaces, so every server has a network interface. You can see this network interface is related to the server that we have spun up here. The network interface has security groups related to it. The instance ID is on and then the public IP address and private IP address. And you can add additional network interfaces to servers as well. So this is just the one that I have, but that it gets created by default on the server that is running in this account. And then the things related to scaling EC2 load balancers, and you can create multiple types. So we have the uh, application load balancer, network load balancer, gateway load balancer, and under here, the classic load balancer. Target groups are related to load balancers. So I'll get into that in different videos. Auto scaling, so we have launch configurations. Like I said, that's older. You should prefer launch templates. And auto scaling groups, which tell AWS how and when to scale servers up and down inside of an auto scaling group. And we'll get more into that in some other videos as well. So let's start with all the options you see in your EC2 dashboard, at least at the time of this video. I'm sure this dashboard will change over time. But I wanted to give you an overview of all the stuff here so that you have an idea of what all of these options are. So you don't really have to be afraid of the unknown of what's going on here.